Well, thank you. It's great to be here. It's great to be with you all. Uh, it's a really encouraging time already this morning, hasn't it? Thank you, Richard and Emily and others involved in our service together. I know many of you uh, last year would have seen the aerial photographs of Ponty Park after the floods. Do you remember the, the devastation, the destruction of that time? The rebuilding, the project of rebuilding was huge, wasn't it? It was this unclimbable mountain. And our lives can feel a little like that sometimes, can't they? Wrecked by forces outside of our control and by our own sinful rebellion against God. And our church life can feel like that too. When you see only ruins, rebuilding can feel like an impossible mountain. Have you been to the park recently? What do you see? You see the Lido or the Lido teeming with people, especially if you go this afternoon. Our Sunday youth are going there later on. The tennis courts are playing. The play area is buzzing. The park run is running. The rebuilding work is finished. What a beautiful picture of God's bountiful grace to us. See, God is in the business of rebuilding from the ruins of our lives. Jesus has come to bring hope out of the wreckage. He is the builder of his house. Remember last year, Ridian and Jamie describing us as living stones built together to create a temple, a holy temple of praise to God. And this morning, we can trust God to rebuild from the ruins. We can trust him to fulfill his purposes and to keep his promises, and to prove his faithfulness. Because he is the sovereign Lord of the universe. All God's rebuilding in our lives and in our church, all of his rebuilding in our relationships, healing our scars, forgiving and cleansing us from our sins, it's all for one great purpose. We're restarting Sunday school, we can hear them. Repairing our small groups, even fixing our leaking roof, is for one great purpose. is to worship God for all he's worth. That's why we're here. And we can trust that our God will create worship within us. That he will stir up his people to rebuild a temple of praise to his name. Just as we've read earlier on in Ezra. As we begin our series today in Ezra then, we see God move people's hearts, stir them up and cause them to worship him. But before we enter the drama of this chapter, let's get some context for Ezra uh, for this series. So in 722 BC, I think I might have mentioned this last week, God's judgment came through Assyria on the northern tribes of Israel. But if you remember, Hezekiah and the people of Judah were protected from Sennacherib of Syria. But then Hezekiah dies. You remember from our start of the series in the summer, his son Manasseh takes over, and the people go downhill faster than a slip and slide. I mean, they slide right off. And the sins of, Ju of Judah are then judged by God, by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. He invades, and there's kind of three phases of this invasion. 606 BC, and then uh, again in 597, and then at the end, in 586 BC, Nebuchadnezzar exiles God's people and completely destroys Jerusalem and the temple. So it's left as Jeremiah promised and prophesied in chapter 25, verse 11. He said, this whole country will become a desolate wasteland, and these nations will serve the king of Babylon for 70 years. When we open the book of Ezra, those 70 years are going to come to an end. And Ezra chapter 1 starts in that place with the first return of God's people. And then there's a second return in Ezra 7 and a third return at the start of Nehemiah. Ezra and Nehemiah come together to give us this account of the return of God's people from exile back to rebuild Jerusalem and the temple. So as we open Ezra chapter 1, the exiles of Judah have been waiting for 70 years. 70 years. 
to help us enter the promise and the drama of God's word. Let's uh, hear from one of the men who was there in 538 BC as God delivers on his promise. I'm one of the sons of Zatu, and I'm here this morning to tell you about the day that God stirred and moved my heart to worship him, to return home to Jerusalem and build the temple. The Lord had promised, and we had prayed, but when he fulfilled his promise, we were all amazed. See, Jeremiah had prophesied. He said that the Lord would end this time. He said these words. He said, he said, when 70 years are completed for Babylon, he said, I will come to you. I will fulfill my promise to you and bring you back to this place. He said, I know the plans I have for you. I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. And so God had promised and we had prayed, but when his promise was fulfilled, we were amazed. We were by the river of Kiba when the news broke. And Cyrus of Persia had come and he had overthrown the king of Babylon. Cyrus. Cyrus. 150 years ago, Isaiah had prophesied of a Cyrus. I am the Lord, he said, the maker of all things. I've declared that Cyrus, he is my shepherd, that he will achieve all that I please, and that he will say, Jerusalem is to be rebuilt. And the temple foundation is to be laid. God had promised. We had prayed. But when his promise was fulfilled, we were amazed. Because the year after that, Cyrus, the king of Persia, a foreign king, made a proclamation. He made a decree. And he wrote it down as well. He said, I'm Cyrus, king of Persia. This is what I say. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. And he has told me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. And our, our, our mouths just dropped to the floor. And then he decreed this. Any of God's people may go up and go to Jerusalem in Judah and rebuild the temple, the temple of the Lord God, the God who is in Jerusalem. And may your God be with you. He had promised, the Lord had promised, and we had prayed, but when his promise was fulfilled, we were amazed. I'm Zatu, the son of Zatu. I'm going up to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple. God has fulfilled his promise. Thousands of us are going. We're not going alone. See, God has called us to worship him. And he's furnished and equipped us with all that we need. We're going with treasures galore. And even with the treasures that Nebuchadnezzar stole from God's temple, it's all being given back. We're going to Jerusalem. I'm Zatu. I'm going to Jerusalem to build the temple of the Lord. What an amazing, dramatic time that must have been. They've been waiting for 70 years, and as we saw in the video earlier on, Many of the people who are now going to return had never been, never been home. They were born in exile in Babylon. But you see, God stirred their hearts. 
He stirred the heart of a foreign king, and he stirred the heart of his people to praise him. And isn't it a beautiful picture of what happens to each of us in Christ? As we become believers, Jesus issues a decree of his grace. He says, repent and believe. He says, return to the Lord. He says, come out of exile. Come home. Come and rebuild a temple of praise. Let me build a temple of praise in your heart to God. By his spirit, he calls us, he stirs us, and he rebuilds us. Believers, Jesus has given you a hope and a future. He's given you a hope and a future. He's brought you back from exile into eternal relationship with God. And now your life in Christ is with ultimate purpose. You and I live to worship God for all he's worth. There could be no greater purpose than that. So how will our lives and our church then be rebuilt to the praise and worship of our Savior? How will we get there? How will we get to the completion of the temple, the rebuilding of worship in our hearts and in our church? Firstly, we must believe in the sovereignty of God. He is in control and he always has been. It is God who moves in sovereign power to fulfill his purposes, his promises. Look down at at verse 1. We read earlier on, in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, in order to fulfill the word of the Lord spoken by Jeremiah, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus, king of Persia, to make a proclamation throughout his realm and to put it in writing. God moved. He stirred the king's heart. Proverbs 21, verse 1. It's what God does. He moves king's hearts in his sovereign power. God will fulfill his purposes. He will rebuild a temple of praise in his people. He numbers our days. He orders our steps. And he stirs our hearts by his powerful word. We must believe the sovereign omnipotence of our God over all things. So that secondly... We will pray, that we will pray for the movement of God. We'll pray for him to stir us up by his spirit, rebuilding his praises in our lives and among us as his people. Pray, pray for a passion for Jesus. Pray for a zeal to be poured out on us. Pray for our rebuilding here. Pray for Ewan and Rhiannon as they restart Sunday school. Pray that the children would worship God for all he's worth. Pray for those who've returned months ago and have been rebuilding and helping us to worship here and online. Pray for those who are looking to rebuild the worship of God on the Greig. Pray for those who are rebuilding Sunday youth and discipling our young people. Pray for our small groups to grow in worshipful fellowship together. Secondly, we pray. Pray for God to stir our hearts and return and rebuild worship there and then thirdly we respond respond to the stirring of our hearts has he been stirring in your heart to return to rebuild the worship of god here perhaps to use your gift of administration or to help with the church finances or to disciple young believers or to support a struggling small group Respond to his stirring in your heart. So God is in the business of rebuilding. And so will you rise up? Will you rise like the son of Zatu did and go up and worship God? Will you join with us in service and worship? And then fourthly and finally, like the son of Zatu, will you share the testimony of God's faithfulness? Richard read earlier on a Facebook post from a few weeks back, sharing the testimony of God's faithfulness in answered prayer. Will you do that? You don't have to use social media. You can do it in a one-to-one. You can do it in a small group. You can do it up here from the front, as a number of people have done the last few weeks. And you can even go online, listen to this, and submit your answered prayer 
to be etched on the eternal wall that's going to be built in Leicester. A wall where a million answered prayers will be displayed as a testimony of God's faithfulness through the generations. Is that wonderful? So as we close those four things again, believe in the sovereignty of God. Pray for a movement of God's spirit in our hearts. Respond to that movement of God of stirring us up by worshipping, fellowshipping, serving together. And testify to God's faithfulness in answering your prayers. Whatever you do in response to God's word today, don't hold back. Don't hold back your gifts or your praises, your service or your worship. Let's pour it out instead. Let's pour out our praises. For you and I, we were exile. We were cut off from God. We were ju- being judged by us for our sin. But in his grace, he decreed to us in Christ, repent, return to me, and you will be saved. And as you pour out your praises, don't worry that you're going to run dry. What does Jesus say? Give and it will be given to you in good measure. Pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Let me close with these words. We're coming to consider in a moment the perfect sacrifice paid for our sins on the cross. Jesus Christ dying for us. And he has now made us to be living stones, being built together to a temple of praise to our God. Mighty God, in mortal flesh, forsaken by a traitor's kiss, The curse of sin and centuries did pierce the lowly prince of peace. Lifted high the sinless man, crucified the spotless lamb. Buried by the sons of man, rescued by the father's hand to reign as king forever. And king eternal, God of grace, we crown you with the highest praise. Heaven shouts and saints adore. You are holy, holy, holy Lord. What joy in everlasting life. All is love and faith is sight. Justice rolls and praises rise at the name of Jesus Christ, King of kings forevermore. Let's pray together. And Father God, we thank you again this morning that you have called us in your grace to return to you. (laughs) That you are rebuilding praise and worship in our hearts and in our lives. You're restoring us. That you've reconciled us through Christ's death on the cross. That you've given us your Holy Spirit and that you've stirred up affections for us for Jesus. That you've given us the ultimate purpose for living. To worship you, Father God, for all your worth. Lord, we pray. We pray that as a people as a family, as those who are each born again, believers in Christ Jesus, that you would rebuild us, rebuild those living stones together, and that over the months and years, we would sing of the testimony of your faithfulness, because you, Lord, have done it in your sovereign power. In Jesus' name, amen.